Good morning fellow YouTubers, adventure seekers and nomads from across the fruity plain and around the world. Matt, Nomadic Native back with you. Thanks for tuning in. So in this video I'm going to show you the uh, kayaks that we bought and that we're going to be using at Lake Okeechobee in Florida and go over a little bit of the rigging that I've done with you on my Jackson Big Rig and uh, I'm also going to uh, uh, talk about maybe a little bit about uh, one of the major repairs that we had to have done here at the house. Uh, well, I'll just tell you about that, okay? Um, here in Northeast, in the Indian Territories of Northeast Oklahoma, we have black clay, and that clay, uh, with the rain, gets wet, and then it dries up and shrinks and expands and shrinks, and what that has caused is the front porch on our house has sunk two inches, about that far, and I had to have uh, the Pure Tech guys come out, and they drilled holes through the front porch all the way around the house, uh, the front of the house, and then they shot expanding foam under there and raised that porch back up. Now I have to go back behind them and uh, re caulk the, you know, where the porch meets the front wall of the house. I have to caulk all the way around there and get that taken care of. There's a few other things that we got to do, get done here at the house. Uh, you guys will be happy to note that Maria went to her VA appointment and the black Frankenstein boot is gone. Her foot is all healed up, so she is back in action. And uh, we'll be, be able to do some you know, hiking and some of the other stuff that we like to do. So, uh, with that, um, let's get started looking at those boats. Okay, so this is Maria's Cruise 12, or Jackson Cruise 12 Angler. And it's, uh, she picked it herself, you know, she took one out and test drove it, uh, or test paddled it, I guess you'd say. And this is the one that she decided she wanted. It weighs uh, in the 70 pound category. It's 12 foot long, 31 inches wide. And the only thing that she's added to it so far is the trolley anchor. And uh, we're still looking at um, a trolling motor for this boat, uh, but there are some considerations uh, for Maria. Um, we're probably uh, going to be looking at one of the side mount trolling motors that would sit over here and uh, I'll tell you why when I show you my Jackson Big Rig which is right there okay now you guys know that I have a full-size fishing boat okay uh, I fish a lot been doing a lot of years and uh, I, I know what I want when I'm out there fishing okay so when I decided to get a kayak, um, you know, right from the very beginning, I, I had some uh, concerns. Uh, the first is, I don't want to be in the water. I don't want to be in a, in a boat that, uh, that I'm going to tip over in, okay? Now the Jackson Big Rig, the reason I went with this boat is because it's 38 inches wide. That's very wide for a kayak. 13 feet, two inches long and it's very very stable on the water uh, you can stand up in it so easy it's not even funny uh, and sitting in it uh, I don't know that I could tump it over uh, I suppose it could be done I just uh, it, but it's very very stable and that's why I went with this boat now this weighs with the seat uh, in it it's uh, pretty heavy almost a hundred pounds okay but uh, still the stability is what I was after and I was after a boat that was meant to, you know for fishing because that's what I want to do and um, let me show you what I've done to it so far uh, I've added a uh, Humminbird Helix 5 it's the uh, G2 version and it does uh, with side imaging and I've got it sitting on a ram ball mount the uh, big rig has these rails that are meant for, you know, the slide in and screw it down tight type uh, accessories. So that's what I'm using there to mount the Helix 5. Uh, the uh, battery for the Helix 5 is a 12 volt 7 amp hour, you know, one of those uh, little batteries like that. 
Uh, right now, I uh, just have it uh, heavy-duty Velcroed to the bottom of the boat so it doesn't slide around or whatever. I'll be putting it in a watertight box and, and doing the same thing with the box. Velcroing it down so it doesn't slide out around. Now, one concern with the uh, Helix 5 installing this is, uh, let me show you. Okay, so the big rig has this recess and it has one on each side of the boat uh, where you can put the transducer for your fish finder. See how it, see how it, uh, we rolled back a little bit. See how it sticks up in that recess? That's good for down imaging, but if you're going to use a side imaging uh, transducer and fish finder, you got to get that transducer below the boat. Okay, so I had to come up with a way to do that. Let me show you how I did it. And of course, and of course, how I did it is is uh, nothing new. Other people have done it this way as well. But um, the hole in the boat for the uh, transducer cut out underneath uh, is round and I got a piece of PVC pipe and when I pull it all the way up the uh, transducer is snugged up in there and I just put a carter pin through it drilled two holes and put a carter pin in there to hold it when I want to lower the transducer and use side imaging I just pull the carter pin and jam this uh, PVC pipe with uh, tape around it at the top down into the hole and that's plenty enough to hold it and uh, for me to use the side imaging. Okay, I mounted the Island Hopper 55 pound thrust trolling motor on this boat. And I use a size 24 uh, interstate marine deep cycle battery to power it. And the reason I went, I mean, there's other motors on the market Okay. The reason I went with this one is because of its simplicity and because it is so easy to take off and install because everything on this boat, the, uh, you know, all the accessories, the, uh, the fish finder, the motor, the battery, all that stuff has to come off because we're going to be carrying it on top of the Jeep. And I don't want all that, you know, it's heavy already and you add all this stuff to it. Now it's really heavy. So, uh, to try and get on top of and off of the Jeep. So uh, all the accessories, the motor, the fish finder, the seat, everything comes off the boat when it's riding on top of the Jeep. Okay. And this motor mounts really easy um, to take it off. All I have to do is take off these two wing nuts and lock washers, disconnect the pull line, and I take off these black caps and then I just lift the entire motor and mount assembly off of the boat and put it in storage for when we're traveling. Uh, the battery, I mentioned uh, right now I'm using this old uh, Group 24 size interstate marine battery deep cycle problem with using that battery is that the bottom of the boat is not flat okay and it's very smooth so uh, even though the battery is the last thing to go in before you take off you know on your on the water and uh, it would probably sit in there just fine I went ahead and reused a very old white mylar cutting board and I put some heavy-duty velcro on each end and just velcroed it down to the bottom so that the battery has a flat surface to sit on and I got a couple of uh, you know uh, self-made <laughs> little bungee straps to help hold it in place just in case but uh, that's how I'm doing it and the control for the uh, motor it's just these you know for power it's just the two alligator clips and I need to put a 60 amp breaker in line on the, on the uh, red side on the positive side 
The control is right here. The island hopper control, it's five forward speeds and two reverse. And when I uh, install the motor, I just plug those in, connect the alligator clips to the battery and off we go. Now, to raise and lower this motor, you saw the uh, little clip there with the, uh, with the line attached. I have the uh, little slide through bracket there that I mounted right here beside the seat. And I mounted the cleat up here beside that. And then you have this uh, rope with a handle on it. And it's just a pull and catch it in the cleat kind of operation to lift and lower that motor. It's pretty easy for me to do, but uh, the reason we're not going to put this same motor on Maria's boat is because she is not physically strong enough to pull that handle and lift that motor up out of the water. So we're looking at a different option for her boat. I bought the uh, rudder kit for the Jackson Big Rig because you have to have the rudder kit for the pedals so that you can steer the motor, okay? Uh, I found out later that uh, you can modify the pedals and not use the rudder kit, but if you do have the rudder kit and you wanna use the slides, you need a quarter inch spacer at the back of the slide here, or, yeah, back of the slide, so that your pedal will miss this little notch right here. Your pedal uh, mounted will miss that little notch. And then you have full motion on both of your pedals. Uh, well, the uh, I have two anchors on this boat and that's another thing that I like about the Island Hopper uh, motor because it doesn't interfere there's the the uh, cleat for the anchor on the right side of the boat goes back through here comes out here through these two rings and through the hole and my anchor attaches to this okay this motor the Island Hopper motor doesn't cover up this area, okay? So it doesn't prevent me from using the anchor on the rear. Now, because I like to anchor down sometimes, and when I'm anchored down fishing on bottom, I don't want the boat to move. I also put a anchor trolley on this side of the boat. Um, and what that allows me to do is to anchor the front of the boat so I can anchor both front and back and be very still in the water. Uh, this is what I use for uh, winding up my anchor ropes. Uh, you can buy these in the electric section at uh, Walmart for 96 cents. Uh, I cut them off right here. There's another section that comes up here. I cut them off because that makes them just about the perfect size for winding up my anchor ropes. So, and last thing is I'm using a sea tug uh, to roll this thing around on. Okay, so that's about it for this video. Uh, we're still, you know, in the process of uh, getting uh, set up and rigged up and ready to go to uh, Lake Okeechobee in Florida and uh, be boondocking there at Three Lakes with RJ's Adventures and uh, maybe a couple of other uh, YouTubers, you never know, right? Uh, so probably another week is uh, when we'll be taking off. If you haven't subscribed, we invite you to subscribe and follow along. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them in the comments below. Thanks for tuning in, guys. We'll see you soon.